future of all that is rests on your shoulders. You think back on your journey here, on all you have seen, on how the Magisters hunted sorcerers who committed horrible crimes, and purged sorcerers who only tried to heal the sick. You think of how the Eternals unleashed void-woken horror on the world in an effort to reclaim it. You look at the source around you. You know that within your reach is divinity. You think of what you could do with such power. Seeing the vast quantity of source in front of you, you think you should be able to handle a couple of void woken. You think of your personal problems. It's time to make a choice. A choice that decides the fate of Rivalon and of you. Where do you stand? After all that you have been through and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the God Woken. Dallas the Hammer, the secret eternal, purged the God Woken and used the source to close the veil to the void. The world was saved. Statues in memory of the God Woken who sacrificed their source were erected all across Rivalon. They would never be forgotten. The half-demon malady took pity on the soulless, godwoken, silent monks and brought them to the Hall of Echoes. There, from the scraps of their souls that remained, she restored them to life. Sorcerers no more, they lived out the rest of their lives, freed of the burden of being the Godwoken. Freed from the weight of the world. As for me, the Godwoken sacrifice severed the link that bound the Sworn to the God King, and I was finally free. To atone for my sins, I spent the rest of my days taking care of the sick and elderly. Telling the story of the Godwoken, that the world may never forget the greatest heroes Rivalon had ever seen. as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so, as always, I am at the ready. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. At last, the world was at peace. The ancient Lizard Empire opened its gates, the houses disbanded, and the Empire adopted a pluralist quasi-democracy. Anyone could vote for whoever they pleased, as long as the House of Shadows approved. With their queen dead and the Void Woken gone, the dwarves held the greatest party in the history of dwarfdom. A new king took the throne, the local brewer. Six days later, he was stabbed to death with a mutton fork. Lucian made amends to the elves. He gave them lands and vast riches from the coffers of the old divine order. But the elves never forgave him. They would not trust humans again. 
And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The Black Pits took fire. The oil there burns still. Driftwood became a center of industry, trade, and transport. Lagan left his over-demanding wife and began a relationship with a local bard. In the spirit of loving generosity, he returned the ring to his now ex-wife. In a fit of rage, she threw it into the sea. The nameless isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct, ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with peace, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han went into the theater and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled down on the farm. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. She presumed she had them in thrall. The truth was, they just liked her. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament. She had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon, and so her search continued. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. With Amadia silent, the priestess Gratiana left the swamps and re-entered the world. She founded an abbey in the Dragonspine Mountains, offering the last of the undead shelter from fortune hunters, novelty seekers, and ghouls. Lucian returned as divine, united the races, and became Lord Emperor of all Rivalon. Only Dallas knew that he was entirely powerless. Dallas and you. The Eternal, now known as Dallas, was a secret advisor to Lucian and to his successors. For eons she would walk in the world, and would outlive the peoples and all, and wander alone amongst the dying stars. And then there was you. You returned to the world as one more human among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility, or did you rebel? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins.